Okay. I'm going to give a little talk uh, about the Markham case. Now, the Markham case is something that you've probably all heard of by now, but let me just give a very brief review. And it's a situation where a homeowner was, um, during a power outage, was running their grinder pump on a generator. And this is a picture of the front panel of the generator. And in order to power the grinder pump, they were using the four wire, 240 volt output from the generator, which comes out here. That outlet is protected by two circuit breakers. These are reset only push button reset circuit breakers. And it also has a voltmeter on the front panel to show you the voltage that it's running at. Now, in this case, when they were running um, their grinder pump off of this generator, there was a failure in the grinder pump. And um, they were accused of having set up the generator incorrectly so as to run the grinder pump at 120 volts instead of 240 volts. Now, it only takes a brief familiarity with this generator to realize that it's not possible to set this generator up at 120 volt operation on the four wire output. It doesn't run that way. There's no way to do that. Now, what happened in this case was that there was a failure in the grinder pump which caused one of these circuit breakers to open and that caused this meter to read 120 volts and this caused a lot of confusion in the repair report and because of that confusion the homeowner was charged for this repair. Now what I have right here is a little demo just to show what probably actually happened in this breakdown. Okay and um, this of course is just a simulation of what's happening there uh, and I've done this with the smart circuit set and uh, in the smart circuit set the upper portion represents the generator and the lower portion represents the grinder pump uh, this smart circuit set has a voltmeter it runs to 5 volts and that's going to represent the voltmeter that's on the panel of the actual generator uh, the two batteries are going to represent the 240 volt output. The 240 volt output on this generator, it comes basically, it's just called a split phase, but what you get, you get 120 and minus 120. It's the voltage between those two that gives you 240. And likewise, with these two batteries, you're going to get about two and a half volts in the normal case. Uh, each battery producing, in this case, about 1.2 volts. These are 1.5 volt batteries, but these ones are slightly run down, and they're producing about 1.2 volts. Now, uh, these uh, in, it, it, switches over here on each side represent the circuit breakers. These are slide switches, so these are not actual circuit breakers. I'm, I, I don't have those in the smart, in the um, in these um, the, uh, the switch uh, circuit that I have here, the um, snap circuit doesn't come with circuit breakers, but it does come with these switches. They're slide switches, so I'm going to use these for the circuit breakers. So right now I have them in the on position, and if you look at the voltmeter, it reads right in the middle, which is two and a half volts. That would represent 240 volts in the simulation that we're we're representing here. And this would be the normal scenario. Now, there's a electric motor at the bottom, and this is going to represent the grinder pump motor. This is a DC circuit. The actual circuit is an AC circuit, but the principles uh, that I'm going to make here tonight are the same regardless. And this just makes it very easy to, to show what I want to show. These push button switches, these push button switches here, represent the motor contactor in the grinder pump. When the water level in the well rises, above the so-called switch level, it will energize these switches and that will cause the grinder pump to turn. So you can see the fan turning on. That would pump the water level down below the pressure switches and that would then turn off the pump. So normally the pump 
runs, you know, sporadically depending on the water usage. Uh, that's when the case when there's not a failure. This is the, the normal operation. Uh, the fact that these circuit breakers are always in the on position until they actually trip due to an overcurrent is what makes it impossible to set this up to run at any voltage other than the 240 volts as long as the generator is running. Okay. Now, in the, in the power outage, there's a problem because these switches are normally in the, inside the grinder pump, but they're at a level where the water in the tank never reaches as high so as to inundate these switches. They're behind, they're in something called the control cavity, which has gaskets, and it should be watertight. But the number one failure in these grinder pumps are the motor contactors and other switches in the control compartment. And the number one reason for the failure is just due to moisture getting inside uh, and sh essentially causing some type of damage. Moisture and electronics is very bad. It creates a short circuit because water is a conductor and that causes components to become damaged. Now, this, and that's exactly what is most likely to have happened in this power outage. In the power outage, the grinder pump cannot control the water level in the cavity, so it rises very high. And if the gaskets are not watertight, then that water can cause damage to this motor contactor. Now that, I'm going to represent that as a short circuit in here with this wire, this wire is going to represent a short circuit. The wire is going to represent ground. Ground potential on this circuit is is this um, metal plate between the two batteries. That's a potential of zero. This is a potential of plus 1.2 volts. This is minus 1.2 volts. Uh, if there was water in the cavity, it could represent a short on this on the motor contact. Do you notice when I touch this, I'm creating a short, and you can see the voltage drops quite a bit dramatically. And that's because there's a very high current draw uh, and the voltage is, is dropping. Now that current draw, when there would be a short circuit, that current draw is going to draw a large current through this, this circuit breaker. And the circuit breaker, this is a thermal circuit breaker, so uh, when it, a large current is dra drawing through it, it heats up. Eventually it will pop open. Uh, when the generator starts running and when the water is in the control cavity and there is a short, there will be a very high current state, which eventually will cause this to pop. The pump can run for a certain amount of time, but the thermal circuit breaker will eventually pop. When the circuit breaker pops, if the circuit breaker pops and there wasn't a short circuit, the potential, the voltage would drop to a very low value, in this case, let's say zero on the meter. But with the short circuit in place, the potential can read 1.2 volts or 120 volts in the AC application. Now, this is what has most likely happened in the actual Markham breakdown. A short water in the control cavity caused a short circuit, causing high current draw, causing one of the circuit breakers to open up, causing the meter to read 120 volts. Now, the generator is still putting out 240 volts, but because there's a pop circuit breaker, that voltage cannot be applied to the grinder pump. This uh, one, the contactor now at this point is, is going to be uh, compromised or, and or damaged so that the grinder pump at this point is not going to work properly. Um, if the circuit breaker were to be reset uh, manually, for example, high current uh, would flow uh, the short circuit because of the short circuit which would then be created. It's possible the motor might run for another period of time but eventually there's going to be damage in the circuit. Uh, in, in, in the actual scenario here the homeowner reported the 120 volts on the meter. This was misconstrued by the technician who took this as a sign that the homeowner had set up generator to operate 120 volts, uh, which was not the case. He can, did not, what it was actually was damage, a damage uh, due to the, well, a, a failure in the pump, which caused the circuit breaker to pop.
that's what was causing it to rate out at 120 volts. Uh, and that is something which is uh, a lot easier to see when you have a, a, this little demo because you can kind of see that it's really 1.2 volts. Uh, the damaged, when this uh, pump was taken for repairs, uh, a number of components were replaced. A number of components are routinely replaced when a grinder pump is taken in for repair. The pressure level switches, the motor contactor switches in the control compartment uh, are, are all replaced without ever trying to find out exactly what the problem was. That's because that's not time efficient to, to really get to a root cause. It's more efficient to simply replace this suscepted, susceptible components and the susceptible components on this grinder pump are the control, the control bracket components, the motor contactor, the smart switch. Uh, those are the components that are inside the motor control cavity. Uh, so that it's not possible to really determine exactly which component failed in this scenario. But what it is possible to say is, is that um, the circuit breaker tripped due to a high current draw due to a failure in the grinder pump. And that is what caused the meter to be reading 120 volts. N not because the homeowner set it up to run at 120 volts, because that is impossible. So this is something which is a very important detail in this case. And um, I just wanted to um, inform everybody in the membership so they kind of had a better understanding of how this, how this works. And I would appreciate any feedback that you do have um, on this, okay? Because this is a very important case for us. And uh, so I thank you very much.